Welcome to Healing Temple Mew Channel. Now there's been some discussion amongst music therapists and about sound therapists about um, the differences between digital sound, analog sound and the sound of natural sound as in sound of human voice. And I think that uh, the answer is that they all have their place in healing and they all have advantages and disadvantages. Now the advantage of the human voice is that it's very natural, it contains the whole spectrum of frequencies and um, also, if you like, is a carrier wave for subtle energies arising from the Fashidi Chakra which is uh, to the left and right of the larynx and uh, combined in many special ways most of which are entirely mysterious but which have subtle effects. On the other hand the disadvantage is that unless my Fushidi Chakra is very clear I can also transmit some of my hang-ups, some of my phobias, some of my problems of the day to a client, uh, thereby possibly altering the, the treatment. However, spiritual healing is a dynamic between the healer and the client so that maybe actually part of the treatment is where I do transfer some of my stuff to them and then uh, they transfer some of their stuff to me. So it's a kind of a dynamic. So it may not be a, such a great disadvantage to pollute, as it were, the, the mantra with my own, um, let us say, with my own problems or with my own energies. Um, it may be part of the treatment. Now the there's a difference between digital sound and between analog sound. Analog sound is created using analog circuits, and um, which not the same, obviously, as digital sound, which is entirely uh, binary, based on ones and zeros in a binary code. The thing about binary code is that it's very pure, and what you hear is what you hear. You, you don't get any impurities mixed in with it. On the other hand, the disadvantage is that it's too pure and in actual fact digital sound does come with its own uh, what they call dark energy which um, zero, you know, you'd think it just a binary code would be zero or one and there'd be, you know, uh, millions and billions of transistors just switching on and off and it wouldn't matter. But um, sometimes the, uh, and in digital music, um, an analog circuit is emulated, is turned into code. And it's not quite the same as the analog circuit and also contains a certain amount of its own uh, accretion, what they call accretion of dark sound, which is created by digital sound. So um, that's something that uh, you have to bear in mind when giving a treatment that the purity itself may be a problem. But on the other hand, that's all could be part of the healing as well. And uh, you know, there's nothing that actually is disadvantageous. Everything is meant to be and everything is meant to happen. So whatever technology that you use, uh, it, it's created there for a purpose. Um, analog circuits are very much warmer and much more natural. They create a broader spectrum and also they have subtle frequencies but they also transmit a lot of electromagnetic radiation as well and um, which could be a problem exposing your client to a lot of uh, of this electromagnetic radiation from the transformers that are that are in a let's say a, a hardware synthesizer and um, so you have to bear that in mind as well but I think that um, the advantage of analog is that it's, again, it's much more natural, although not as natural as a human voice, and um, 
or not as natural as, as the sounds that we hear now with water flowing and birds chirping. Also what about bells and uh, Tibetan singing bells? The quality of these products depends on the purity of the metals that which make them up. So the purer the metal, the better the sound. You know, that the more impurities you have in the bell or in the Tibetan bell singing bowl, uh, you know, the, the more this, these impurities are transmitted to the client. On the other hand, these impurities may be there for a purpose. They may be part of the healing process and may be part of, the, of, of what is natural. Nature is not pure. Um, and maybe the search for purity is part of the problem that we have. So it's a quite a complex subject and I think that you have to take guidance or use your intuition about whether you use computers or analog synthesizers or the human voice or natural sound. And anyway, when you record natural sound, it's never as you actually hear it. It always depends on the quality of the AC-DC converters anyway in, in a hi-fi system both for recording and reproduction. So, I th and if you're using bells or Tibetan singing bowls, bear in mind what the actual bowl or bell has been made of, what, what uh, metals have been used. So, it's complicated, and I think the best thing is to go ahead, experiment, and be very uh, sensitive and aware of your client's needs and their reactions during a session. That's really all I can say. Uh, on this quite complex subject. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.